All right, here we go. Another fall day, and I am getting off even later than last time. And today I wore a coat. So I didn't get too cold like last time. If I can hurry, I can catch this wind cycle and be in the air. All right. Let's do this. close to the terrain and then all of a sudden it just drops away. Come on, you gotta be able to see those colors. Alright, so I'm a good mile into uh, a no land zone. So why would I do this when there's no landing opportunities below me? Because I'm crazy. Nah. Because I am high enough that I can easily glide over here to one of those fields and land, so I'm not, I'm not concerned. But you never want to get in a situation where you do not have a landing uh, possibility close by, because you never know, you'll need to land at some point. 8,100 feet on the dot. And 35 miles an hour. When I hit this, that means this is a, a 30 mile an hour wing at trim speed. So I know if I'm above 30 miles an hour, I have a tailwind. So if I have a tailwind, when I hit this bridge over here, I know I'll have some updraft from the uh, wind coming up the face because I know it's blowing from behind me. There's 36 miles an hour. Not much of a tailwind, but I'll take it. I don't know if you can see that patch of trees right there. 
Holy Manoli. Okay, you see how this bridge makes that little cove? It'll funnel the air up and I'll get probably the strongest updraft right there because it takes a broad piece of the mountain and funnels it into a narrow portion of the mountain. So I'll go right here and uh, probably get me a nice uh, bump of air. Oh, look at those. Here we go. Holy smokes. Yeah, that's shooting me up. Just stick to this. Here we go again. Not as strong, but really nice. Oh, yeah. I'll just turn around this little spot right here. So I'll take a second help. Right there is the strongest. So got me a couple hundred feet. I've got 82.64 now. So probably 150. There's a red tail hawk. <laughs> he's out in control. He may be catching, you know what, he's catching some thermals right here. I will default to his superior knowledge of the sky. Let's see if I can find that spot. Pretty strong right there. All right, 9,013. Look at my town. Wow. <laughs> Woo, how cool is that? Well, I think I'll fly over to, uh, over to that side and then make a circle for home. What a view! I'll tell you, lookout points and view areas do not do much for me anymore. Not after doing this. <laughs> right on. I hate the GoPro because all you can see is like distant hills, but this is just beautiful. I've got some nice lift here because I'm just coasting and I still have, I'm dropping at 200 feet per second. Sorry, feet per minute. I got called out a few times on my last video. Here's a little like uh, antenna repeater. Oh, gonna get some updraft right there. Oh my gosh, it's so great. I'm gonna be careful in here. Oh boy, gotta get out of here. Pretty gnarly jump bumps right there. Oh boy. Boy, pretty gnarly lift. It is lifting me with no gas. Oh gosh, that's crazy. Wow. On a wing like this, that is a lot of lift. And then I hit the edge of it and here I go. Wow, that is a lot of lift. That whole mountainside is heated up and it's just driving the air up. Now I'm on the outside of that and I'm just dropping like a rock. That's pretty cool. There's not really any wind up here that I can detect anywhere. Holy moly! Woo! But there is some strong thermals. Oh my gosh! Okay, entering that was pretty, uh, pretty hard hit. But now that I'm in it, I will just go ahead and soar this ridge just a little bit here. Gas at, I'm just at an idle. And I'm not gonna get a complete soar, I don't think. But I'm getting a very slow descent rate. <laughs> this is awesome! Woo! Okay, I'm losing the hill a little bit. Okay, there we go. That's nice. Oh, yeah, I'm almost staying up. This wing is not meant for this. So the fact that I can almost stay up shows me how much lift there is right here, right now. Look at these cool rocks. I fell out of the lift. You see the hill falling? Right here, I'll be back in it. 
Here we go. Okay. Woo! That's great. Oh, that's so strong. That bought me back up. Right here, I'll fall back out of the lift. See, it bought me back up to the level with the hill just to show you what happens, and there it goes. See it falling away? So I'll, I'll hang a left, put some weight shift into it. Ooh, I fell out hard. So now I'm 80 feet, 90 feet below the top of the hill. Try to find this lift again. Oh, can't use the gas, can't use the gas. All right, here we go. It'll hit me right here. Oh man, where is it? <laughs> Fell out of it. it. Must just be right above those rocks. And I can't access it. It must be actually probably coming up the other side more than this side. Now look at me fall. All that time being able to maintain altitude. Oh, there's some bump. Uh, and now I'm just falling. That's the power of lift. Saves you a lot of gas. All right. Now, I'm gonna head towards home. And I'm right down there by the lake. That's my landing zone. Okay, I get asked all the time, what happens if your motor crick quits. Won't you just fall out of the sky? Let me show you what happens when the motor quits. My motor is now off. Nothing happens. There's an airplane. That's why this is the safest form of personal aviation, in my opinion. When practiced safely. I can have a motor failure land safely. In fact, we turn off our motors every time we land, so it's not an issue. Just keeping an eye on that airplane. It's not an issue. So, that's what happens if my motor quits. That's why you always fly with uh, a place that you can land safely. So if your motor quits, I can land anywhere I want to down here. I can land on the golf course, any one of these fields. Um, when I'm in the hills, I make sure that I have a glide path, so if my motor quit at any time, I could just turn away from the hill and glide out to a field or something. So that's what happens. Now, I can restart my motor in the air. No prob... Uh-oh, maybe a little problemo. It's cold. <laughs> my starter is actually cold, so the... Looks like I am not going to get that going again. Oh. Look at that! My starter string came out. So, that means I've got to line up this landing just right. Now my, uh, my speed has increased here, so I've got to figure out, now that I've dropped below that, I don't have a headwind anymore. So, I've got to plan this landing just right without a motor. So this is going to be a good exercise. Let's see if I can do a little judging while I'm still up high. Okay, I've got 34 miles an hour. If I turn down towards the lake, what speed do I have? Thirty-two... Thirty-two miles an hour. Alright, well in a situation like this, where I would normally land right out the car, because I do not have the luxury of powering to the right position to stop, I'm not going to take a chance. So I'm going to fly, uh, I'm going to land, you know, nice and solid in the field. Boy, now that's showing me something a little different. Um, and I might land downwind. 
because I've got one shot. I've got one approach. Now, I don't want to mile, land a mile away from my car. So, crossing the road, I've got power lines there, so I want to make sure I have plenty, plenty, plenty of altitude when I cross back over them. So I'm just going to take a turn right now. Now I'm just going to burn a little altitude with some S-curves. Just a little bit. And I am up and ready to land, get max speed. Oh, we are definitely downwind. Oh, here we go. Ah, there we go. Oh, definitely downwind. So, felt that speed kick picking up as I approached the ground. Oh, I got my helmet stuck in my netting. There we go. Felt that speed picking up. So rather than trying to run it in, I just slid it in. Yeah, I've got a significant downwind. You can see the grass moving. And uh, last minute I should have whipped around. Now if I'd had a uh, uh, windsock out here, I would have known that on approach. But I just hate setting them up. All right. That is it, folks. That was a fun flight. Catch you next time. Peace out.